Well, hello, man cavers. Today you catch me at home with me trains. Anyhow, we're talking control box for the Starlomatic. Well, we better get the credits rolled. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Right, for you guys who have been following the project, if you remember, this box used to have a load of electrical components. What have we got in our box? Da -da 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 -da. We only got this now. We're down to this. Last night at home here on this very puffy, I actually reassembled the control box. And do you know, I actually didn't find it as daunting as I thought. And it was actually very therapeutic, methodically putting these components back in. Anyway, I'm now going to show you the control box and you can see what I've done and what I've got to do. Because I have found a couple of problems. Right, here is my control box, as far as I've got. This is the door to it, and all the components go on the inside of the door. Look how that broken gauge has come up. That has come up beautifully. If you remember, that gauge come in that really, really rusty control box I had. And the glass, I thought, was broken, because it had, like, come across one side. The glass hadn't actually broken. And once I took the gauge to pieces, the glass is a semi-round piece of glass with a flat along the bottom. And all the glass had done is it had come unstuck and turned, putting a flat edge sort of across here. So basically, once I got it all to pieces, I cleaned a bit of glass, stuck it back in with some model glue, Made a new gasket and then put the gauge back in. Put the gauge back together. And look how that gauge has come up. It's beautiful. We have the missing start button. We now have the start button. A work and reset button. The thing we are missing. Switch. I will show you said switch. Here is the said switch out of our other box. Now, sometime today I need to go to the nut and bolt shop. Of course, these nuts wouldn't come undone. These screws. This basically bolts on the inside there. So this centre piece is coming up through this hole and two bolts go through. And then we have a little selector switch. Go on there like so. There we go. And that's what... Yeah, that'll be our job. So anyhow, I need to go and get two screws to fit in there because all I've got is metric screws and these are certainly not metric. All right, let me come round the back. And upend this thing and I'll show you some more problems. Here we go. I know some of you guys are going to say, Oh, why ever didn't you paint the inside of this box before you reassembled it? Well, keep it original, I say. Or as original as we can. As you can see, this switch goes in there. I have cut wires here. Which I need to join onto these ones. So we've got a red and a grey here. We have a red and a grey here. We have a blue and a grey here, and a blue and a grey here. So we know where all these go. This wire here goes on to this one here. And this one here goes on to there. But I found a problem with this. This main relay unit. Now it weren't until I was investigating last night. See these little electromagnets there? Open and close them points look. This little coil. This is our reset button I was telling you about. Our start button is down behind there. Which I reassembled and cleaned. But I did find a problem. Let me see if I can suss this out. With our points. There are our little points. Can you see the problem? Not only is this one bent... Where I don't think it's going to be working very well. This one. Can we see that? Yeah. This one down here. Let me see if I can get a screwdriver to show you. This one down here. Look. There's meant to be a point. Go down onto that. 
which comes out of here and sort of one of these there's meant to be another one of these but a shorter one like this side look see this side we've got a little point come out here which touches down that point is missing we've got an open contact there with nothing coming out of here so i think that snapped off see what i mean look so i have multiple options i have another one of these whole blocks on the board on the other board i haven't looked at it to see what condition it's in if that's all good i think my best option would be change this whole thing just um mark where the wires go unsolder them and put new ones on or if i don't want to unsolder the wires i could just cut them and then join them solder them back together to make sure you get them right color for color either way there are options so yeah i need to change this block get my switch back in so i need to get some screws for this four-way switch you wouldn't believe the quality of this switch i've actually had it to pieces and cleaned it all out with contact cleaner and this is really heavy this switch really heavy and it's surprisingly well made inside there's four different sets of contacts being a four-way switch. And you ought to see the quality of them. I really should have filmed it. But there you go. So, yes. This is how far we've got with our control box. But we are roughly back together. So, I think this component's okay. But this wire does need to go back on there. I need a screw to hold the wire back in there. Our restored gauge is all nice. We had these capacitors were missing on that spare board what I bought. So I'm hoping now with these caps here, that's all all right. I'm hoping this is all right. But I do have spared. I, you know, the only thing I haven't got is these capacitors. And yeah, that's it. Everything else I've got spare. So I don't think there's anything go wrong with these coils because they're only coils of solid copper. So there you go. Anyhow, quick update on the control box and exactly what's been going on with it. What's happened to it. So let's show you again how these work. Everything is screwed through from this side. So the other day I actually just painted this with silver hammerite. Left it overnight in the shed. And don't that look lovely. I have got to get some hinges for here because the original hinges have broken off and rotted. I can probably look around Wix or even online and find some small hinges. Well, you can sort of self-tap screw through there. There you go. Right. So that's basically it for the very short video of what we've been up to with our control box. So yes, hopefully there'll be more. I was going to do a video on the Lister ST2, the diesel twin. But after speaking to my buddy last night, he has got a couple of pieces that might be of interest to me. So we probably won't get filming done on that twin diesel till next week now. Because since he rang me yesterday, I was like, well, I might as well include it all in one video. Basically, he's going to give me the original fuel tank back, which we can actually get strapped on the engine. So I don't have to mess around with an external tank. And I have a sneaky feeling the starter motor, I think there's meant to be a spacer go between the starter motor and the engine. And I don't have that spacer. But he know the man who's got it, who took it off. So if he hasn't used it, we can possibly get that back. I don't know, but we definitely need that spacer, what goes between the starter and the block. If not, the starter isn't going to work because it pokes too far in. So yes... Lots to do, but until I actually get over Jeff's and actually see what's what and get the original tank back and get this starter ring, perhaps, we can then fit this engine back up and start that twin up, get it bled up properly and give it a run. Um, the SL, I was hoping to get that on the trailer this week. I'm not sure whether that happened this week, but it will definitely be going on there soon. I just want to give that hammer a couple of days to get fully hard before I start lifting engines onto it. Plus, I need to assemble some form of gantry to actually lift the damn thing. But there you go. Well, that's it for now.
I have a wind turbine that's fell over. Do you like my wind turbine, by the way? I bought the wind turbine for the train. And I've actually wired it up to a couple of AA batteries, which I stole from a set of LED lights. Look at that. Ain't that good? A working wind turbine. You imagine him stuck there, though. Look at that. Anyhow, that's me being sad with my train set. There we go. Right. I'm going to go, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha. <laughs>